پردازیم به ده داستان انگیزشی و آموزنده در انگلیسی. Mountain Story A son and his father were walking on the mountains. Suddenly, his son falls, hurts himself and screams, Ah! Oh! To his surprise, he heard the voice repeating somewhere in the mountain, Ah! Oh! Curious, he yells, Who are you? He receives the answer, Who are you? And then he screams to the mountain, I admire you. The voice answers, I admire you. Angered at the response, he screams, Coward. He receives the answer, Coward. He looks to his father and asks, What's going on? The father smiles and says, My son, pay attention. Again, the man screams, You are a champion. The voice answers, You, you are, are a champion. champion. The boy is surprised, but doesn't understand. Then the father explains, People call this echo, but really, this is life. It gives you back everything you say or do. Our life is simply a reflection of our actions. If you want more love in the world, create more love in your heart. If you want more competence in your team, improve your competence. This relationship applies to everything, in all aspects of life. Life will give you back everything you have given to it. Your life is not a coincidence, it's a reflection of you. My mom and her eye. My mom only had one eye. I hated her. She was such an embarrassment. She cooked for students and teachers to support the family. One day during elementary school, my mom came to say hello to me and see me. I was so embarrassed. How could she do this to me? I ignored her, threw her a hateful look and ran out. The next day at school, one of my classmates said, Hey, your mom only has one eye. I wanted to bury myself. I also wanted my mom to just disappear. I confronted her next day and said, If you want to make me happy, why don't you just die? My mom didn't respond. I didn't even stop to think for a second about what I had said, because I was full of anger. I was oblivious to her feelings. I wanted to be out of that house and have nothing to do with her. So I studied real hard, got a chance to go to Singapore to study. Then I got married, I bought a house of my own, I had kids of my own. I was happy with my life, my kids and the comforts. Then one day my mother came to visit me. She hadn't seen me in years and she didn't even meet her grandchildren. When she stood by the door, my children laughed at her and I yelled at her for coming over uninvited. I screamed at her, how dare you come to my house and scare my children, get out of here now. And to this, my mother quietly answered, Oh, I'm so sorry, I may have gotten the wrong address, and she disappeared out of sight. One day, a letter regarding a school reunion came to my house in Singapore. But I lied to my wife that I was going on a business trip. After the reunion, I went to the old shack just out of curiosity. My neighbors said that she's died. I didn't shed a single tear. They handed me a letter that she had wanted me to have. My dearest son, I think of you all the time. I'm sorry that I came to Singapore and scared your children. I was so glad when I heard you were coming for the reunion. But I may not be able to even get out of bed to see you. I'm sorry that I was a constant embarrassment to you when you were growing up. You see, when you were very little, you got into an accident and lost your eye. As a mother, I couldn't stand watching you having to grow up with one eye. So I gave you mine. I was so proud of my son, who was seeing a whole new world for me, in my place, with that eye. With my love to you. 
The Farmer's Donkey One day a farmer's donkey fell down into a well. The animal cried piteously for hours as the farmer tried to figure out what to do. Finally, he decided the animal was old and the well needed to be covered up anyway. It just wasn't worth it to retrieve the donkey. He invited all his neighbors to shovel dirt into the well. At first, the donkey realized what was happening and cried horribly. Then, to everyone's amazement, he quieted down. A few shovel loads later, the farmer finally looked down the well and was astonished at what he saw. With every shovel of dirt that hit his back, the donkey was doing something amazing. He would shake it off and take his step up. As the farmer's neighbors continued to shovel dirt on top of the animal, he would shake it off and take a step up. Pretty soon, everyone was amazed as the donkey stepped up over the edge of the well and left. Story of Two Frogs A group of frogs was traveling through the woods. Two of them fell into a deep pit. When the other frogs saw how deep the pit was, they told the two frogs that they were as good as dead. The two frogs ignored the comments and tried to jump up out of the pit with all their might. Finally, one of the frogs paid attention to what the other frogs were saying and gave up. The poor frog fell down and died. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could. Once again, the crowd of frogs yelled at him to stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out, the other frogs said, Did you not hear us? The frog explained to them that he was deaf. He thought they were encouraging him the entire time. This story teaches us two lessons. There is power of life and death in the tongue. An encouraging word to someone who is down can lift them up and save them. A destructive word to someone can be what it takes to kill them. So be careful of what you say. Speak life to those who cross your path. Eagles in a Storm Did you know that an eagle knows when a storm is approaching long before it breaks? The eagle will fly to some high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, it sets its wings, so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above it. The eagle does not escape the storm. It simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the winds that bring the storm. When the storms of life come upon us and all of us will experience them, we can rise above them by setting our minds and our belief toward God. The storms do not have to overcome us. We can allow God's power to lift us above them. God enables us to ride the winds of the storm that bring sickness, tragedy, failure, and disappointment in our lives. We can soar above the storm. Remember, it's not the burdens of life that weigh us down, it's how we handle them. A little boy went into a store, reached for a soda carton, and pulled it over to the telephone. He climbed onto the carton so that he could reach the buttons on the phone and proceeded to punch in eight digits. The store owner observed and listened to the conversation. The boy asked, Lady, 
Can you give me the job of cutting your lawn? The woman replied, I already have someone to cut my lawn. Lady, I will cut your lawn for half of the price of the person who cuts your lawn now, replied the boy. The woman responded that she was very satisfied with the person who was presently cutting her lawn. The little boy continued and offered, Lady, I will even sweep your curb and your sidewalk. Again, the lady's answer was negative. With a smile on his face, the little boy replaced the phone. The store owner, who was listening to all, walked over to the boy and said, Son, I like your attitude and your positive spirit and would like to offer you a job. The little boy replied, No thanks, I was just checking my performance with the job I already have. I am the one who is working for that lady I was talking to. A man was walking through an elephant camp and he realized that the elephants were not being kept in cages or held by the use of chains. All that was holding them back from escaping the camp was a small piece of rope tied to one of their legs. As the man looked at the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants didn't just use their strength to break the rope and escape the camp. They could easily have done so, but instead they didn't try to at all. Curious and wanting to know the answer, he asked a trainer nearby why the elephants were just standing there and never tried to escape. The trainer replied, when they are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them and, at that age, it's enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The only reason that the elephants weren't breaking free and escaping from the camp was that over time they adopted the belief that it just wasn't possible. Moral of this story, no matter how much the world tries to hold you back, always continue with the belief that what you want to achieve is possible. Believing you can become successful is the most important step in actually achieving it. A farmer had five sons. They were strong and hard-working, but they always quarreled with one another. Sometimes they even fought. The farmer wanted his sons to stop quarreling and fighting. He wanted them to live in peace. Plain words of advice or scolding didn't have much effect on these young people. The farmer always thought what to do to keep his sons united. One day he found an answer to the problem. So he called all his sons together. He showed them a bundle of sticks and said, I want any of you to break these sticks without separating them from the bundle. Each of the five sons tried one by one. They used their full strength and skill, but none of them could break the sticks. Then the old man separated the sticks and gave each of them just a single stick to break. They broke the sticks easily. The former said a single stick by itself is weak, but the stick is strong as long as it's tied up in a bundle. Likewise, you will be strong if you are united. You will be weak if you are divided. 
Once upon a time, there was an island where all the feelings lived. Happiness, sadness, knowledge, and all of the others, including love. One day it was announced to the feelings that the island would sink. So all constructed boats and left, except for love. Love was the only one who stayed. Love wanted to hold out until the last possible moment. When the island had almost sunk, Love decided to ask for help. Richness was passing by Love in a ground boat. Love said, Richness, can you take me with you? Love decided to ask Vanity who was also passing by in a beautiful vessel. Vanity, please help me. I can't help you, Love. You are all wet and might damage my boat. Vanity answered. Sadness was close by, so Love asked, Sadness, let me go with you. Oh, love, I'm so sad that I need to be by myself. Suddenly there was a voice, come love, I will take you. It was an elder, so blessed and overjoyed, love even forgot to ask the elder where they were going. When they arrived at dry land, the elder went her own way. Realizing how much was owed the elder, Love asked Knowledge, another elder, who helped me. It was time, Knowledge answered. Time? asked Love, but why did time help me? Knowledge smiled with deep wisdom and answered, because only time is capable of understanding how valuable Love is. A group of alumni highly established in their careers got together to visit their old university professor. Conversations soon turned into complaints about stress in work and life. Offering his guests coffee, the professor went to the kitchen and returned with a large pot of coffee and an assortment of cups. Porcelain, plastic, glass, crystal, some plain looking, some expensive, some exquisite, telling them to help themselves to the coffee. When all the students had a cup of coffee in hand, the professor said, If you noticed, all the nice looking expensive cups have been taken up, leaving behind the plain and cheap ones. While it's normal for you to want only the best for yourselves, you should know that is the main source of your problems and stress. Be assured that the cup itself adds no quality to the coffee. In most cases, it's just more expensive and in some cases, even hides what we drink. What all of you really wanted was coffee, not the cup. But you consciously went for the best cups and then you began eyeing each other's cups. Now consider this, life is the coffee, the jobs, money and position in society are the cops. They are just tools to hold and contain life and the type of cop we have doesn't define nor change the quality of life we live. Sometimes by concentrating only on the cop we fail to enjoy the coffee. Savor the coffee, not the cops. The happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. Live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly. ده داستان رو به صورت نرمال و با سرعت طبیعی با هم خوندیم با هم مرور کردیم. امیدواریم که شما هم به این مهارت تونسته باشید برسید که بتونید داستان ها رو با سرعت نرمال و به همین روونی بتونید بخونید. اگر به این مهارت نرسیدید اشکال نداره عرض کردیم خدمتتون میتونید برگردید گام به گام داستان ها رو در آدرس های مربوطه که خدمتتون در قسمت توضیحات این ویدیو تقدیم کردیم دنبال کنید باهاشون تمرین کنید تا به این مهارت برسید. آرزوی تندرستی و خورسندی داریم برای شما جانان در هر کجای دنیا که هستید.